So, Red, you were telling me, too, about many of the interesting characters that you met with, and one of the ones that you spoke the most highly with was the chaplain, the Catholic priest that was with the 464th and 465th over there. You said he used to stand between the two runways when you guys were taking off and when you were coming back. That took some courage, didn't it? Oh. What would you think of that guy? Oh, he, he was a wonderful fellow. Oh, I tell you. He did, there was double runways, you know, the old PSP stuff. And he's that man, every ship that took off, he stood right there and was waving to the, uh, his crews. One over here, and the next one over there. He stayed right there. What was dangerous, he was still came back there and stood there when all the aircraft landed, shot up or not. This was a dangerous place. He had them guys trying to get down with an aircraft that's liable to blow up in any minute. They can't uh, maybe crash right by him, but he never changed nothing. He stayed right there till the last cruise bunch was on the ground and were safe. What a man. And you mentioned uh, the group commander Schroeder, who had a couple of interesting characteristics uh, about how he used to fly. Yeah, I, uh, I got to fly my last mission and, and flew with the wing commander himself, a fellow named Schroeder. He rode in the, the uh, co pilot seat, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the pilot's name. But what I do remember is the colonel I had come up with. I had my normal duties, you know, and I came up to the cockpit and looked, see, just peeked in, up in the. the and all look down here by the uh, commander's left leg, and there's a jug of booze there. And every now and then he's taking a honk off this thing, you know, and getting on the radios and and uh, talking to them Germans. Yeah, he called me, you the German soldiers and so and so's and all that. We're coming. We're going to blow the hell out of you. All that, and take another little nip, you know. Wow. Quite a character. Quite a character. So nobody minded that he was well drinking while flying the plane. They, no, well, they must he, have trusted he had, him. He had a pilot doing all that, so he was. I see. In good shape. You know, he's the type of fellow that that uh, we had a, uh, the squadron there, but right on the side of the hill, you can sit up here. Work this where we are. Uh, they also put a built a big uh, screen there so we could show movies. And uh, back in the old black, most of them black and white, but we really appreciate them. Well, they built a little platform there, and here'd come the colonel, and he'd sit, sit there with his little stool. Because that's nice, you know. Well, there was nobody there, so I know I did. I sat down on, on the right side of that thing, you know, waiting for the movie to go on. And just as the movie started, they turned out to what lights there was, you know. My God, here comes the colonel, and oh, he, and here I am, I think, somebody else, one guy with me. And we're sitting up there on that, uh, the on the commander's uh, belly whack, you know. But uh, lo and behold, we started moving. No, no, that's all right, both sat right down. You never knew how to take that. <laughs> Maybe he was sober or something like that. You know? mm. But he was, he was a good commander, really was. Mm -hmm. And who was the guy that was always sticking his head up out to look out the windows and he caught a piece of flack one day, you said? That was uh, our crew uh, navigator, Raymond J. Farquhar from up in the Boston area somewhere. These uh, officers' caps were the normal shell, you know, that was a little bill and a hook around. But the top of that thing, uh, you see that they were, they were just buttoned on there, and apparently he wasn't aware that he just couldn't wear that anywhere. He got in the habit of uh, after the mission was over with, and we were landing, he'd come up on, in, in the, uh, my area, in the gun up by the gunnery, gunnery uh, northern gun and all this stuff, pull loose the hatch, and then uh, and it's a little footstool from the wall there and he stand up there now you, uh, this is for the engineers that's no normally is up in there you know but we I, I tried to hit him on the leg uh, we were down and hitting the on the ground you know but we're still going uh, 60 miles an hour here 
poor uh, Lieutenant F Fargo, he opened that dude up and stuck like, like stuck it up, and he came going back down in in there and looking up. But he don't have any of the top to his, his cap, you know. The wind blew it right off. He never did. <laughs> I don't know whether he ever got the top of that thing back or not. <laughs> but he was quite a character. And another day you said he was flying and you were going through the flak and something knocked him right off his feet. What happened with uh, that? That was the t uh, one of the waist gunners, a pickup fellow. I see. And he hit Joe Graff from Chicago, Illinois. And he was one of them, uh, oh, about, he was a good six foot three, tall kid. Uh, and folks were rich, rich people up there in, in Chicago. And he was forever trying to house, find out he, how he could slick some of them, uh, either or the, or, or our own or, own men or some Italian out of money or something, you know, this one, this, that time, this normal for him. But he, he uh, apparently was in, in the flu with us in the aircraft and went through for all the uh, shooting and so forth and went off, back off of the target and trying to start to head back home. And uh, the kids told me that uh, Joe was laying down there and didn't get up. Oh, so I, when we got down, closed the bomb bay doors and everything, I went back there and he was just getting up, you know, and he, he was had been laying there. He said, uh, I don't know, so just stand there and just all of a sudden, boy, yeah, something, something took a, my feet right off from under me. Well, I was still down in the bomb bays and looking up like, you know, I was like, well, I could see, he, I'm looking right straight at his feet and knees, you know, and I see a piece of metal. So I got up there and said, turn around here, Joe, turned around, and you know something, on that old GI of shoes, uh, there was a piece of uh, a shell that exploded, a German shell, and it was there on the edge of the, the arc there, and it just hits perfectly the heel of his brogans. Took that in turn took both his feet out from under him, just right up like and down he went, you know. And he 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 don't know why he didn't know why he fell down when he saw that. I he he kind of got green for a little bit. Boy, that, it was close. But he, he, he's quite a character, quite a character.